Welcome back. So today we're going to be finishing up talking about Lagrange multipliers. Now yesterday we dealt with the case that we had a function that we were trying to maximize or minimize and then we had a constraint equation, something like xy equals 1, xy equals 4, that kind of thing. And what we'll be dealing with today is the case that we have a constraint inequality. g of xyz could be equal to k, but perhaps it's also allowed to be less than k, giving you more freedom. Now, in, in general, in life, I would say, the more freedom you have, the more work you have to do to deal with that freedom. And that will be the theme for today. Um, we, will, we will have a single example, which hopefully will not take too long, uh, but we do have two pages set up for us uh, to fill in. Uh, hopefully two pages will be enough, but if not, we'll just add some more. Let's find the extreme values of f of x, y, plus 2x squared plus 3y squared minus 4x minus 5 on the region x squared plus y squared less than or equal to negative 16. Now, when you are given a constraint inequality, we approach the problem in two parts. Part 1, let's find critical points. inside the region. So that involves the process of taking the gradient of f, setting it equal to zero. So let's do that. Let's find f sub x and applying the partial derivative with respect to x to this polynomial, we have 4x plus nothing minus 4 plus nothing. And this is equal to zero only if x itself is equal to one. Now if I check f sub y, and I take the derivative with respect to y, then I'll get 6y minus nothing minus nothing equals zero. And let us then say that y must be zero. Now be careful, we need to make sure that our x and y critical point that we found is actually in the region described by the constraint inequality. So we need to check that 1 squared plus 0 squared really is less than or equal to 16. And that's true in this case. But if our critical point was not in the region that we're considering in this problem, we would have had to throw it into the garbage can. It would have been useless to us for this problem. Any critical points outside this region are irrelevant to us and must be discarded. So we're lucky that this one actually was worth something. So let's just make a note. We found the critical point of one comma zero. So then our goal is to use Lagrange multipliers for the boundary of the region. Use the Gange multipliers for the boundary of the region. Corresponding to the circle x squared plus y squared equals 16, the circle on the edge of this disk shaped region. So here is our constraint function, g of x, y. The gradient of g of x, y is equal to 2x, 2y. And let's recall that the gradient of f we calculated above. We had 4x minus 4 in the x position and y in the 6y in the y position. So let's set up our Lagrange multipliers equations, which says that first of all, we need gradient of f to be equal to lambda gradient of g. And we also need, let's in fact make this more specific, a 
and let's say we want 4x minus 4, 6y, to be equal to lambda, 2x, 2y. And we also require that the constraint equation is satisfied, x squared plus y squared must be equal to 16. Again, we're just considering what's going on at the boundary of the region, where we have a 16 precisely. Okay, so now we break this down, and we can say 4x minus 4 is equal to 2 times lambda times x. That comes from comparing the x components. We also have that 6y must be equal to 2 times lambda times y. And then finally, we have our constrained equation. Now notice that in this second pink equation here, y completely drops out of the game, and this can be simplified directly to lambda equals 3, by dividing both sides by 2 and by y. So if I substitute that in here, lambda equals 3 tells me that 4x minus 4 is equal to 2 times 3 times x. And if we solve this for x, we get x equals negative 2. Okay, now to find y, let's use the only equation that we have not used yet from our system, and that's x squared plus y squared equals 16. So turning that into negative 2 squared plus y squared equals 16, we get 4 plus y squared equals 16, y squared equals 12, or y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 12. Now, what have we obtained? We have obtained three points at which it is possible for our function to attain its maximum or minimum value. We have candidates 1, 0, negative 2, root 12, and negative 2, negative root 12. And the only way for us to tell at this point at which one of these locations the absolute max and min are achieved are to go ahead and take these points and plug them directly into the function to see what the outputs are and compare the size of those outputs. So let's take a moment and remind ourselves of the function's formula. We had 2x squared plus 3y squared minus 4x minus 5. If we go ahead and we plug in f of 1, 0, and we calculate that, we get 2 plus 0 minus 4 minus 5, which works out to be z equals negative 7. Now let's try the other two points. At 2, negative 2, root 12, for example, we have 2 times 4, 8, we have 3 times 12, 36, we have 4 times negative 2, positive 8, minus 5. So that looks like 11 plus 36, that looks like 47. And finally, let's see what we get when we plug in the last point. Now the only difference between the second point and the third point is the sign of the y value. In one case we have the positive square root and in one case we have the negative square root. However, in our formula, the only y that we have is squared. So positive negative won't make a difference and this will have the same output of 47. So, what was the smallest z value we achieved? we achieved a smallest z value of negative 7. And so this would be the absolute minimum value for this function on this region. What was the largest z value we obtained? We obtained a largest z value of 47. And that would be the absolute maximum value of this function on the given region, attained at two different points. Alright, now if you're interested, here is how I would write my final answer to this question in the most concrete and clear terms that I can think of. I would say the following. The absolute maximum 
value of this function f of x, y is 47 attained, this value is attained at two locations, negative 2 root 12 and negative 2 negative root 12. And I would say the absolute minimum value is negative 7 and that was attained at the point 1, 0.